What a photo. Alex M, Mr. Alex Tech, and we're going to jump straight into DaVinci Resolve because I've got something to show you. So, I'm going to grab this subscriber button, put it on my timeline. It's not got any animations on it whatsoever. I want to animate it to look cool, but I don't want to mess around with keyframes. So instead, I'm going to grab my new Magic Animate tool. We'll drop that on there, give it a click, open up the inspector, effects, and then we get to choose. Do I want a whip, a zoom, spin, a reveal, or a dissolve animation, or a combination of any of those. So let's go with whip for the time being. And we're just gonna add something in here. And now if we hit play, it whips in from the side, it stays as long as we want it, and at the end, it whips back out. That'll work on any timeline, any resolution, and any frame rate. And after the fact, we can make it longer, shorter, move it around, do what we want with it. Not happy with the whip, let's get rid of that and add a zoom instead. So that it just pops in, like so. Not happy with that still, right, we'll add a spin as well. Let's give it a 360 degree spin as it pops in. Boom, easy peasy. Too big, let's just resize that, change its location, put it in the right place. Bing, bang, boom, job done. You can use this to animate PNGs, JPEGs, any other photo files, as well as videos and even titles within DaVinci Resolve. Hey, how cool is that? This is what I'm calling the Mr. Alex Tech Magic Animate Tool. And hopefully it's gonna save a bunch of people a whole lot of time. I know there are a lot of simple animations that people want to do within DaVinci Resolve, which you can relatively easily do with keyframes, but there's a bit of a learning curve and can be a little bit time consuming. So I wanted to create a tool which took all of the effort out of that so you could do some basic animations really simply, quickly and easily. And this is what I've come up with. Now, of course, it is free. You can download it via my Buy Me A Coffee page. But if you're feeling generous, you want to help support the channel, please do consider buying me a coffee while you're over there. Also, this is for DaVinci Resolve 17 only. It uses some of the tools they introduced in DaVinci Resolve 17, so it won't work on any of the older versions. This is the first one I've done. Obviously, I do plan to update it. There's some things I'd quite like to change for a version two, but I'd also like your feedback. So if you use the tool, you've got any thoughts or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll take it all on board. Hopefully we can make some cool improvements for a version two or even a version three a little bit later down the line. Now, while testing this, I did also want some YouTube subscriber buttons to mess around with. So I knocked them up in Photoshop. So I figured I may as well include those as well. So within the download folder, there's a couple of YouTube subscribe PNG files, which you can import into your projects and use wherever you want. Do whatever you want with them. So let's not waste any more time. Let me show you how to download, install, and start using the Magic Animate tool. So to download, click the link down in the description below to take you to my Buy Me A Coffee page and you'll find the Magic Animate version one. Click that and then click on Get This. Then you'll be asked to enter a fair price. Now, as always, I ask for any donations that you can afford to pay, but if you can't, feel free to just put zero in there. Then enter your name and email address. Once you've entered the details and hit the pay button, it'll take you to this screen. You've just claimed the magic animate, and then from here, you can just hit download. And that will download the Magic Animate version 1.zip. Once downloaded, you'll end up with this, a Magic Animate version 1.zip folder. If you're on Windows, all you need to do is right click and then extract all. If you're on Mac, all you need to do is double click to open up that folder. Jump into the newly created folder and you'll find a Magic Animate version 1.settings file. This is what we need to import into DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to jump into DaVinci Resolve. We're going to shoot over to the Fusion tab. And then we just need to open up the effects library in the top left hand corner. From the list on the left, come down to edit, template, and then effects. And then all you need to do is to grab that settings file, hold your mouse and drag it here to this list, and then release. DaVinci Resolve will think for a second before refreshing, as you saw just then. And then we can jump back into the edit tab. If we now go to effects library, come down to effects, you'll see the Magic Animate version 1 tool is now readily available from your effects library. So now we're on the edit tab. I've got my magic anime installed and ready to go. So now we can start to have some fun with it. So I've got my timeline set up with my video clip here, and I'm gonna use one of these subscriber button PNGs, which you can download for free. There's a link down in the description below, and we're gonna animate this. So I'm just gonna drag this PNG onto my timeline above my footage like so. Now by default, obviously that just sits in the middle of the screen and doesn't really do anything at all. And then we're gonna hop into the effects library, Toolbox, effects, we're gonna to grab our magic animate, click, 
hold our mouse and drag it onto this PNG file and release. And we've added the animate tool. Now by default, again, it won't do anything. It'll just sit there like so. So what we need to do, give it a click so it's highlighted in red and then open up the inspector, top right hand corner. At the top, you've got the effects tab. Give that a click and then make sure to click on magic animate if you don't see all of these options here. Now there's a bunch of options, so let's work our way through. At the top, you've got a bunch of transform options. Now to make sure that everything functions as expected, I generally do recommend that you use the transform tools within the magic animate to resize and relocate anything rather than the standard transform tools within the video tab. It will just make sure that everything works as expected. If you don't use these tools, it probably will work exactly the same. You just may have some different numbers or things may be slightly harder to work with. So my subscriber button is sat in the very middle of the screen at the moment. What I'm gonna do is just change the size. So I'm just gonna drag this slider down, make it a bit smaller, and then I'm gonna use the center just to put it in the location that we want it, which is about there. So you can just use all of these transform tools to move things around. Underneath that, we've got the curve speed. Now this controls the speed of the animation. The default is two, but you can increase that or decrease it as you go. This will affect the animation speed of all of the different controls. There's not independent speed controls for each one, but I'll show you how that works in a moment. And then you've also got motion blur if you want to add motion blur to your animation. And then underneath that, we've got whip, zoom, spin, reveal, and dissolve. So let's go through them all. Let's expand whip. And then within here, we've got the scale, angle, curve, and mirror. So all we need to do for the whip, grab your playhead on the timeline and move it to the very beginning of your object that you're animating. So I'm gonna put mine right at the very beginning here. And then all you need to do, grab the whip scale wheel and just increase that until your subscriber button in this instance just goes off screen like so. And then if we just hit play, it's just gonna animate in like so. It will start over here off screen and it will always end wherever you've set this transform options to be. So it'll whip in like so. If we just skip to the end and hit play, it'll reverse the animation at the end and whip out. At any point, we can just make this longer or shorter. We can move it around the timeline, do whatever we need to do, and it will automatically update like so. Underneath that, we've got the whip angle. So this is the direction that the animation is gonna come in from. So at the moment it's coming in from the left. What I'd like to do, move your playhead to roughly some point within the animation. So I'm gonna go with about here where I can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen. And then if I just change the angle, I can see the subscribe button moving. So I can just pick the angle that it's gonna be coming from. So I'm gonna go sort of a diagonal one. So I'm gonna put it there. And if we just hit play, it'll just whip in like that. You can at any point, increase or decrease the whip scale if you want to. So if I just decrease this, I can have it start from the middle of the screen and just move over to the far right. Just play with it until you're happy with it. Underneath there, we've got the whip curve. So this is the animation curve. Just use the drop down boxes. There's a bunch to pick from. Just select the one you want, have a play with them, mess around with them, see what they do, and then just go with the one that you like. And then underneath that, lastly, we've got the whip mirror. So by default, the animation will be mirrored in and out. But if you just want it to animate in, if you untick the mirror, it will do the animation at the beginning and then it will just sit there and then cut off as normal once it reaches the end. If you want to disable the whip scale, just double click on whip scale to set that back to zero and that will disable the effect. Let's have a look at the zoom. The zoom doesn't have a scale option, it's simply either on or off. So we're just gonna tick the zoom enable box, and then if we hit play, it's gonna just pop in from nothing like so. Again, we've got the zoom curve, you can just choose those, and we've also got the mirror. To disable this one, we simply untick the zoom enable box. Next up, we've got the spin control. So we're just gonna open that one up, and we've got the scale, curve, and then mirror once again. Now the scale is cool because this is in degrees. So it doesn't matter what you set this to, it will always end up in this position. So the subscribe button will always end up the right way round. You can just choose how much of a rotation there is before it gets to this point. So if I just add a little bit of rotation, like so, it's gonna start there and then it's just gonna rotate 
and end in its final position like so. If you want to obviously do a full spin, if we put 360 in there and then hit play, it's going to do a full 360 degree spin like that. Again, it's going to nip out unless we disable the mirror and we've got the curve. To reset, we'll just double click spin scale to reset that to zero. Then we've got the reveal control. This one is a little bit different. I think there might be a better way of doing this, but it works for the time being. You've got the scale, angle, width and height. Now what you have to do for this one, once again, put your playhead at the very beginning and then you need to just increase the width and then the height until you see this sort of see-through box appear in your object. And then you need to just amend the width and the height so that it completely covers your PNG or video or whatever it may be, like so. And now if I hit play, we've got this cool reveal animation, like so. And then from here, you can change the angle. Now the angle only really works at 90 degrees for this one. Anything in between looks a bit janky, but if we leave it at zero, it wipes over to the right. If I change that to 180, it'll obviously do a little reveal to the left. And if we change that to 90, it will reveal upwards. And if we do 270, it will reveal down. Then of course, we've got the curve and then the mirror. To disable this one, we just need to reset the width and the height. And then last but not least, we've got the dissolve. Now this is really simple. Just tick that to enable it. And then you've got the curve in the mirror. And that just does a real quick dissolve in and out like so. And that's how you use all of these different options. Now that's individually, but of course you can also combine them to do loads of cool different things. So I'm going to leave the dissolve on for the time being, but then I'm also going to add a, let's go crazy, a 900 degree spin. And now we've got this. So we've got a spin, but it also dissolves in. If we were then to also enable the zoom, we'd have a dissolve zoom spin. And you've got something that looks like that. And lastly, if we really wanted to, we could also add a whip. So let's go, I think it was about three yards before. So let's go up to about three. And now it zooms, rotate and dissolves. So you can just pick and choose all of the different options, combine them, mess around with them to do all sorts of different animations. And again, once it gets to the end, it will just reverse out like so. Now this demonstration has just been using this PNG file, but of course, if we wanted to, we could just add a video. So let's just use this one, this duplicate one. We'll add the magic animate, and then let's just do a real quick whip on this one. And the same thing, we've got a video which just pops in across. So we could almost use that as a transition tool. We'll delete that one. For text, all you need to do the exact same thing. We're just going to go to titles. Any of these fusion titles will work. So you can just grab any of these. So let's just grab this one, slide from center line, which is this title animation. But we can also just go to effects. We can grab our magic animate, drop that onto there, go to the effects. And then again, let's just do a zoom for this one. And we've got the original standard fusion animation, but we've also now got a zoom effect at the very beginning. If you're looking to use your own text or titles, again, it's exactly the same, but you just need to make sure that you use the text plus effects rather than the standard text. So I'm gonna grab my text plus, put that on my timeline like so, but then go back to the effects. We'll grab our magic animate and drop that on there. We'll go to the effects tab, I just want to increase the size using the magic animate. So we'll just make that a bit bigger, like so. And then we'll do a real quick whip. We'll hit play. And there we go. Easy as that. So that's the basics down. Let me just show you now how to use the curve speed and the motion blur. So I've just added another subscribe button here. We're just going to leave it in the middle of the screen. And let's just really quickly add some whip. So we're just going to push this over to the side, like so. Now, if we go back up here, we've got the curve speed. Now, the curve speed affects all of the controls. There's no independent control for each one. You just affect the speed, and that changes all of them. By default, it's two. Now, this may be a little bit confusing, but two represents one second. So this animation, this in animation, will always take one second at the beginning, and then one second at the end. And that's irregardless of your frame rate. It will always just be one second.
If you want to slow it down, all you need to do is to use this wheel to increase this number. So if I was to put that up to four, i.e. double that, it would now take two seconds for the animation to come in and two seconds for the animation to go out. If I want to speed it up, I just go the opposite way, lower that number, so let's go with about one. Now it's going to be about half a second and we've got a much quicker whip, like so. The motion blur, really simple, tick the motion blur box and then we've got two options, quality and shutter angle. Let's just increase the quality and now if we just go back you can see while it's doing our little whip, it's also now got motion blur on it, which just gives it a different look. And again, once you've enabled the motion blur, it will have motion blur, whether you've added a whip, zoom, spin, reveal, or a dissolve. Now, last but not least, obviously within DaVinci Resolve, when you're doing any fusion style animation, which we are now, things can start to run a little bit slowly. So just to make sure that everything runs correctly, here's a few quick tips for you. If you shoot into the playback tab at the very top, you can lower your timeline proxy. So mine's currently set to off, but if I put that to half resolution, my preview window will run at half resolution, which will just make it slightly easier to run. And then hopefully we will have smoother animations. Also, if that's not done the trick, click on playback once again, go to render cache and change that to smart. And then you'll have a red bar appear on your timeline above your object, whatever it may be. And then when that will slowly turn blue, once it's turned blue, it means it's fully rendered. And then you'll be able to play that back, hopefully with no issues whatsoever. And that's it for this one. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy using this tool. Please do let me know down in the comments if you've got any thoughts or feedback about the Magic Animate. As I say, I'll probably do a couple more versions going forward, so I'd love some feedback on it. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And if you know anyone that you think will enjoy this tool, maybe consider sharing it with them as well so everyone can benefit from it. And yeah, that's it. That's it from me. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.